And quite frankly, about half those Republicans really weren't very dependable because they kind of liked being part of the club. It was brutal. The most lopsided legislature in the country. So the obvious question, how do you work with a legislature like that? Well, you, you can't just go directly to them because they don't care and they were going to do everything they could to upend any hope I had. So I took the message directly to their constituents. I didn't try to sell all my ideas at the Capitol because they weren't interested. So I went to their hometowns. I went to every county in the state. And when there was an idea that we wanted to do, I put it to them and I said, if you'd like to see us rebuild our roads or if you'd like to see us make it easy to get a car tag, something that everybody wanted. I said, yeah, don't tell me, tell your legislator. And when enough of them are willing to work with me, we will get this done. And at some point, there, were enough, there was enough pressure from the bottom up rather than from the top down, and that's how we were able to accomplish it. I'm happy to report that today, Arkansas, every single constitutional officer, of which there were none when I first went in, now every one of them are Republican. Now there are super majorities in the House and the Senate. Back 20 years ago, 91% of every elected official at the local, county, and state level were Democrats. Today that is almost flipped, and it's about a 75% Republican, all the way up from local, county, and state. And every single member of our congressional delegation, both senators and all members of Congress, are Republican. It is a different world. So there is hope for Oregon. Um, it ain't easy. I wouldn't pretend to tell you that it is, but I'm convinced that one of the things that you're doing is showing people who have historically thought they didn't have an option or a choice that they in fact do. And by doing that, you start winning friends through the common sense of the people who realize maybe people hadn't been completely honest with them all these years before. We've got time for one more. Um, we've got the mic headed right back there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come turn it around a little bit? Uh, the question up here was, do I want to come run in Oregon? Look, I have sworn off ever running for anything again, okay? Uh, the last two presidential campaigns pretty much did the end. I went through my retirement accounts and uh, annuities and everything else to, to do that. And I'm pretty well decided that there's a greater chance that I will have transgender surgery than that I will ever want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have it. Thank you. I love you, Governor Huckabee. Love watching you on Fox News. And I have a two part question. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask them consecutively so you don't have to answer each one separately. Okay. Um, do you think Fox News is moving to the left and is Sarah going to run for governor? Oh. Uh, well, let me take the second one first. Uh, I think there's a good chance that she might. She is going to spend a lot of her time and energy over the next year trying to help the president get reelected and trying to help people who are running for the Congress and the Senate to get elected. Uh, she does not want to jump ahead of the next election cycle. She just thinks that's in, inappropriate because, uh, quite frankly, we need to win the elections of 2020 before we start running the elections of 2022. And I appreciate that she feels that way. And I agree with her. So, she has not had time barely to catch her breath from getting back from Washington. Uh, so, I, I mean, the honest answer, and I'm not just saying this, she doesn't know yet. But I do think there is a good chance that she might run uh, for governor in 2022. If she does, I think she'd be a terrific governor. And what a cool story. She'd be the first person who would move into the governor's mansion, having already lived there before. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that would be pretty neat is that she knows where every nook and cranny is because she basically grew up there as a little kid. And now she gets to come back, and her kids couldn't hide from her because she knows where they are. <laughs> now, the second part of your question, which was the first part of your question about Fox News, look, I'm a contributor. i got to be careful what I say because um, I like the paychecks Fox News gives me. I like them a lot. Um, has Fox changed? I think so. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. And uh, I, I will tell you, there were many stories about Roger Ailes. All I know is that he was good to me. 
Uh, I really respected him, and he was a genius, an absolute genius. And I think in many ways, Fox is missing his leadership. Because one of the things that he was adamant about is that we did not attack each other. Uh, I, I won't use the rather crude phrase that he used to describe how we were to behave, but let me just say that it, it had something to do with that one did not relieve oneself inside the tent. <laughs> he spoke it a little more bluntly than that, but I think you get the point. I appreciated that because I don't think any organization does itself well when it fights with inside of itself. Hmm. And the camaraderie and the uh, esprit de corps that had been so much a part of that was largely because that his leadership was about having a mission and sticking true uh, to the things that were true and to giving voice to a side of the story in America that was not being heard. Uh, I hope we don't lose that. There's some great people at Fox, people I love and respect very much. I hope they feel that way about me. Um, and I hope that the, the network does not lose its unique voice as being a balance to the insanity over what I call the Catfish News Network, the bottom feeding Catfish News Network, CNN, or that other network, BS, NBC. Um, we need Fox for the simple reason that it presents some level of balance and uh, a level of fairness. So I hope that's right. Well, I don't want to spend all your time. I know you have other things. I want to say thank you. What a wonderful audience you have been. What a great group of folks you are to support the Freedom Foundation, which I hope you'll continue to do as a model to the rest of the nation, that even in Oregon, you can have extraordinary victories and help change things in your state for the good. Thank you and God bless.